Thursday, man. It's my favorite day of the week. Always has been. I just like Thursday. This is the Thirsty Thursday Podcast, presented by Lumberland Co., home of the official Bat Mother. Joined by today's guest, Mike Abraham of Northeast Baseball. Because it's not like I was like the stud or like the standout on every single team. Yeah. Um, but also like as a catcher, you kind of have to know, at least what I tell my catchers, our catchers in our program and the guys I work with is that if just when you put the gear on and you step onto the field, you're the leader. Whether you want to be or not, it's, it's like being the quarterback. Not necessarily like being vocal all the time, but you're the only guy who can see everything. So yeah, you have to be partially vocal, but you are the designated leader of the team at that point. And I think for me, from catching, I always saw roles. I never necessarily thought about it, but it was just kind of ingrained in me simply because I played that position. So I think roles, are a huge part. I wasn't sure if it was is or are there. Um, college degree. Um, but <laughs> um, I think it's huge. Whether you're playing travel baseball, which I guess is a little bit different, or you're playing high school baseball or college baseball, everybody has a role. From the coaching staff to the players. Like, coaches have a role. Um, you know, some some teams are orchestrated differently where the head coach is more of just a figurehead and the assistants do a lot of the work. Some of the head coach is more, you know, involved. Um, but then the assistant coaches are kind of, okay, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, and then we'll all kind of meet and, and talk about it. Those are roles. Players, you can only have one three hitter. You can only have one four hitter. Do you think that's why it's tougher for high school baseball players to transition into a college role where they might have been the focal point or the leader of the team, but their freshman or their sophomore year, they're going to take a lesser role in terms of leadership or a lesser role in terms of playing time. I think that's a difficult transition for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily call it difficult, but I think it's definitely a transition. I think it's something that um, everybody goes through. I know, you know, we've talked about it and, you know, you go from, so for me personally, going from my junior year, you know, we talked about it last week, not being a huge contributor on the team performance wise, but, you know, being a, a positive guy on the bench, stuff like that, catching bullpens, doing the little things. Um, then moving to senior year, being, uh, you know, one of the leaders of the team. You know, more of an on-field contributor. And then going into my freshman year of college and kind of taking a step back and learning. So I, I think I think it's all personal perspective. Um, I think a lot of kids get caught up in, I mean, you should have the competitive nature where you want to play. No, no doubt about it. You go into college, you go into high school, I want to play. But you have to be realistic as well. If you have an all-conference, you know, if you're a shortstop, you have an all-conference shortstop ahead of you, you're probably not going to play shortstop. Right. You have to have, you have to be realistic. So you have to have goals, but, you know, make them realistic. Um, 
So like, I, you know, the best thing for me, my freshman year, you know, I had the fortune behind a, a, a senior catcher who was really good. Um, but not was he just really good, but he was open to teaching me. And, you know, I had a, I had a great catching coach in high school, um, Mike Coden, who actually played in the Central State as well. Um, but, perfect game had me at that because I didn't have any of that right nor does that matter so whatever you did in high school whatever you did you know in travel ball okay yes that got you to this point but once you go there it's all about what you're doing now why do you think it's so hard for people for people to conceive that even though they have a lesser role in terms of playing time it's still meaningful like, uh, can you relate back to any of the teams that you played on that had a really good record where the players that had lesser of a role playing time-wise but understood what their role was or people coming out of the, the bullpen, whatever it might be, because it's a hard sell saying that you're important even though you're not playing a lot of the time. Yeah, I think probably the best example, I mean, we didn't win a ton of games in college. Um, but my junior year was probably our best year. And I think we were just kind of having fun. And nobody was really worried about, I shouldn't say no one. Um, but for the most part, everybody was really worried about just winning. Like we beat, I remember it, we're, we're at, I mean, you were there, you know, we opened up our conference series at Nova, who is 18 in the country. And, um, you know, we go in there and we take two out of three from them on their field. And everyone was like, whoa, okay. And then we go the next weekend and we go to Florida Tech, who is right around the same, between the 15 and 20 range nationally. And, you know, they're, you know, chirping a little bit. Um, because, you know, we didn't have, you know, we don't have the greatest, you know, past the last, you know, 10 years or whatever. And we go in there and we take two out of three from them. And at that point, it's like, okay, you know, we're, we just won four out of six against two top 25 teams in the country. Why can't we keep doing this? Right. And I think when you see a little bit of that, and it wasn't just one guy, you know, we didn't have anybody who was, you know, an absolute dude. Right. It was, you know, one through nine, everybody had to kind of scrap and claw. And, um, and I think that, that was, and obviously you're going to have every team's, you know, you're not going to be perfect, but I mean, I, I think you can see it, you know, you get that first win and everybody's like, oh, okay. You get that second, third, and everybody's like, okay, all right, now we can do it. And, you know, we tailed off a little bit, um, but that was the only team, I would say, in college where there was a true togetherness and it really wasn't, nobody was really worried about me. It was more about, okay, how are we going to win this game? Yeah. Um, and I, that was cool. And I think we tried to replicate that the next year. Um, and I think we thought we were better the next year and, you know, the results didn't come, but it wasn't lack of effort, you know, stuff happens. Yeah. Um, so, and I think the junior year, the year we had that actually happen, I don't think we were as tight of a group as we were my senior year, really? but junior year, it just kind of meshed together. And I think senior year, our, we were much closer, and it just, you know, 
stuff happens, so if somebody gets hurt, what the hit that fell last year doesn't fall. Yep. You make an error in an untimely spot. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, players, you know, players win games, mm-hmm. win and lose games. So, um, is, yeah. is there anything else that we can build off of with? I say that, and I and I, that was bad because now I'm a coach, so now it sounds like I'm putting that on. <laughs> Okay. As a player, that was my thought. Players win and lose games. Now as a coach, I think I, I lose games. Players win games. Gotcha. Uh, building off of perspective, is there anything that you think you can share of what would be important for a parent to have perspective? I know you coach a wide range of kids from Little League to about to go into college. And I, yeah. I know that you give advice, obviously, to people that are in college and, and pro, but it's probably not quite as relevant, but any advice for perspective that you think would be important from a parent standpoint? Well, I think I'm just going to touch on like how my parents were personally. Um, so obviously, like my mom, you know, drove me everywhere, greatest person in the world. Um, and she was at every game and watched, but never really, other than she always told me I was slow um, and I need to get faster. Um, but she, yeah, no, she wasn't wrong. <laughs> she wasn't wrong. Um, mother's always right. And, but I mean, she was great, always super supportive, but never, you know, tried to get in the way of anything. Um, but I, I think my dad, and this is, I, I tell this a lot, and my dad coached me until I was, you know, 15 in Babe Ruth, but this, the ex- thing that sticks out to me. And if, if he told you he would laugh at it, we laugh at it now. Um, when I was 13, Babe Ruth in the districts, we were playing East Side. I remember it like it was yesterday. We were in the first base dugout. And he was telling me something on the bench, and I just, I, I didn't want to hear it. And I just screamed, shut up, to him. And we both just kind of looked at each other and didn't say anything. And... And that, I, I felt really bad, and obviously I apologized. And like I said, now it's funny. Um, but I think that was an awakening for both of us, where he kind of saw it was time. I was starting to take it more serious, and he knew it was kind of time for him to back off a little bit. And for me, I just needed to kind of relax and control my emotions more. And after that, that made our like our relationship and my dad is you know my best friend i mean i talk to him every single day and going whether it was high school and then going into college i called him after every single practice every single game and that was something that as he so he was really we were close baseball wise and he kind of saw it was time to back off and then eventually i would go back to him for advice so i think that's something that you know, we try and share with the parents of our players, don't be overbearing. Be a parent. It's not our job to tell you how to parent, um, but you can be overbearing. You can burn your kids out. Let it happen organically. Let there, Because if this becomes work, if it goes away from just pure love and enjoyment of the game, then why do it? What was the what was the build up to that? Was it just the resistance between you guys, like making it more than what it was? What was the build up to? I don't know. I think I blacked out after that. Um, but it was just he was uh, he was on me for something, and probably rightfully so, um, definitely rightfully so. And it just I don't know. It was a boiling point. Um, and. Yeah, I regret it, but looking back, I think it's it's one of like the turning points in our relationship where it taught me like, hey, you have to stay here. It's bad radio. You have to stay even yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um stay level headed. Yeah. Um as opposed to be a roller coaster. Um especially as a catcher. Yep. Um and, and I, like it's another thing I tell the catchers all the time. Body language is huge. I think it's one of the most important things um, about a player. I think it's especially a coach. Um, but if you see if the ball goes through your legs or you just throw somebody out, it should be the same. Yeah. Your, your teammates, the opposing, opponents, should never be able to tell. Right. 
Um, I think that's really important. What about something else I'd be interested to hear your take on is going through two different coaching staffs. How, how important or what was your takeaway mentally with different, um, different coaching views, different um, routines, like different stuff like that. So you have one year that you guys are going through one routine, one process, next year's totally different. Mentally, what did you learn from having to go from one system to the next? Thank you. Good question. Um, I think for the most part, I think college baseball in general is practice is practice. Mm -hmm. You're going to go over first and thirds. You're going to go over bunts for every single day mm -hmm. for an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. Um, you're going to take BP mm -hmm. for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and it's going to be very team oriented. Um, I think that's how most programs are. Now, how that is communicated, there's little things, you know, little competitions thrown in. Um, obviously, every coach has their own personality. So that is what kind of differentiates it. Yeah. Um, I think what, what would separate for, well, so the personality, and then I think the biggest part of college baseball isn't, doesn't really have to do with the practices. Um, how you get better, in my opinion, in college baseball is what, what type of work are you personally willing to put in? Um, so are you going to go early and you're going to take extra ground balls? Because you're going to get 50 ground balls in practice max um, if you're an infielder, fly balls. So you have to find time to, okay, i got to work on my backhand. I need to work on my backhand more. I need to work on, you know, my flips more. I need to work on that ball, in the, you know, that ball in the hole, that ball up the middle. The working on the plays that when you're in practice, you're making the routine play. So you're, you're not going to make the routine play every single time. You're going to, you know, as a second baseman, you're going to make that play deep in short right field and you're going to have to plant and spin. So if you're going to have to make that play in the game, why not practice it? You're not always going to have that opportunity to practice. So you need to find time to work on that individually. Um, so I, I think the, the staff, I think it being able to stick to your personal routine, whether it's one staff or another staff, I think that is the most important thing. Um, and I think for me, that's something that I think I kind of took down a notch when we changed staff um, in my senior year. Um, and there's, there's multiple reasons for that. I'm not gonna get into that. Um, but like I said, I think Coaches or, or, or practices in college are, are pretty much the same no matter where you go. Now, yeah. certain guys like certain things, yeah. but your personal routine, and I think obviously part of that's going to go with the coach's personality. Yeah. Um, you know, we have some guys who have really good actions who do some really good things, and their coaches don't necessarily like it. So what's going to help them is their personal routine. Yeah. Um, I think that's huge. So for a freshman, you coming in, you said you didn't really want to be a hardo. Is it, a, is it a, a, how do you relate that to working hard though? Like I get maybe from a vocal standpoint or you know, trying to do more than what your role might have been, but how important is it to stay true to who you are? Like you come in as a freshman and you know hard work to have gotten you where you are. Yeah. You not necessarily showing up the upperclassmen but staying true to you know, what you love and what you think is going to help you and the team, how important is that? I, it's huge. Um, and I guess, again, I'll go back to kind of my personal um, experience where, like, yeah, the fall, I wasn't, gonna, I wasn't talking much. I was just going about my business. So you can work your butt off. You can, you can push yourself without, when I say hard, I, I just mean not, you know, talking about myself constantly. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I worked pretty hard, um, you know, in my freshman fall and in my freshman spring, and I think that's what earned you your respect from upperclassmen. Mm -hmm. Not what you say. Um, right. You know, be from Missouri. Show me state. Show me. Don't tell me. Right. Um, and then, you know, going into my freshman year, you know, like we were talking about before, I played 10, 15 games my freshman year, started to play more at the end, 
and again I was going in and I was catching. So what did we say before? When you put on the gear, you go behind the plate, you are naturally a leader. So at that point, now it's time to kind of, okay, I'm not a freshman anymore, I'm catching. Yeah. And I ran into some situations where there was a senior and we bumped heads a little bit and uh, there were some confrontations, um, but that was just me being, you know, I, I like to think a competitor and trying to do whatever I could for the, the team to win. And um, I think we had some egos at that point. And if you've got to kind of kick your ego aside, and I mean, obviously everybody has an ego at some point. Um, and you need somebody to kind of push you down sometimes. And that's happened to me plenty of times. Um, and again, it goes back to that staying, staying level-headed. Um, you're never as good. I think Monville said it last year or last week. You're never as good as, it, as you seem, and you're never as bad as you seem. Um, it's good. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I think I think you need to have the work ethic. You definitely don't. There's no need to change that. Um, but I think you just need to know time and place vocally to say stuff. Um, you know, get your feet wet, learn the game. I think it's different now with, with the level that travel baseball is at. I think with kids playing at such a higher level, more games, um, more often, I think they're, they're more ready to step in as a freshman and compete and be a high level player right away, a lot more than I was as a freshman. So in that sense, I think college baseball is different now. We, professional baseball is different in that sense. Um, you're getting superstars at 23, 24, 25, as opposed to 28, 29, 30. Um, and I think travel and baseball is a huge part to do with that because you're playing at such a high level all the time. Right. Um, whether you're going to play Division Two, II, Division Three, Division One, you know you're all playing in the same tournaments. You're playing against really good players. So when you do take that next step, it just turns into another game. You're just wearing a different uniform. So I think it's a little different now um, than when I played, which it's not like it was that long ago, but travel baseball, I think, has really taken over in that sense where it's preparing players at a younger age to compete at a higher level. Is there anything else that you'd like to touch on, um, whether it's travel ball, catching, college, whatever, perspective? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a ton I, I can talk about. Whatever um, you Put me on the spot here, a lot of pressure. Um, I would just say, I think, you know, we, we talk about a lot. We talk about the process. Um, and it's a, it's a word I use a lot mainly because you taught me it. Um, and I think, you know, people can take it lightly. It's like, oh, yeah, of course, you know, stick to the process, blah, blah, blah. Um, but especially in the off-season, in, in the winter, um, even during, during games, I think, I think too many people are, are negative. So this is a game where you're going to fail. It's guaranteed you are going to fail a lot. Um, Offensively, at least. Right. Um, so, you know, you hear that yeah, you fail twice as twice as much as you succeed in your your Hall of Fame. Um, so, my big thing that I try and you know explain to guys, and you know, Scott tries to explain to guys, in Montville, and all our coaches is don't dwell on the negatives. You're gonna have bad at bats. Obviously, we don't want to have bad at-bats, but it's going to happen. Um, but I think too many kids take, okay, I smoke a ball to the shortstop. He catches it. I'm out. Man, I didn't get a hit. So what? You smoked a ball. You squared a ball up. I lined a ball out to the center fielder. Ugh. That's a, that's a good at-bat. If you're, if you're hitting the ball hard, you know, even if you see six or seven pitches, 
find positives. I'm a very positive person, and I think that's because I was so hard on myself as a player, and I was so negative and with myself. I was really hard on myself, and it killed me. So I'm trying to be the complete opposite as a coach. Awesome. Um, and I, I think that's my biggest thing in, you know, been trying to, you know, stay in touch with some of our guys playing in college now and be where your feet are, you know, stay in the moment. If you go over four, hey, so what? Find, okay, so let's find what we did, what we did wrong and let's, let's try and make an adjustment. Yeah. It's, there's no need to dwell, dwell on an 0 for 4 night because the great part about baseball is there's a good chance you're playing tomorrow or the next night or, you know, two days. Mm -hmm. So I would say be positive. Um, stick to your process. If you find something that works, works for you, do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to explain, you know, explain to your coach or you shouldn't have to. If you're doing something that's really working for you but you're not a great communicator you're, you shouldn't have to explain everything. If it works for you, great, do it. That's awesome. Yeah. Everybody's an individual. Mm -hmm. What works for me might not work for you. What might not work for somebody else. Right. So I think just sticking to your personal process and staying positive. Um, and I, I think those two things are, are huge, are huge in in finding success, not just in baseball, but in life. Baseball's, baseball and life, they're, they're pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Failing, you know, ups and downs, but how do you bounce back from that failure? How do you handle that failure? That's what really, in my opinion, defines what type of person you are. Is there a place that people can follow these thoughts that you have on social? Huh, so funny you ask that. <laughs> um, yeah, go follow follow us, Northeast Baseball, um, at Northeast underscore B-Ball. That's on Twitter, Instagram, um, on Snapchat, NE underscore Baseball. You can follow me at, at Coach Mabes, at Coach underscore Mabes on, on Twitter. Follow Scott Patterson, at NEB Scott P. Um, and, you know, we're constantly... You know, trying to put out content, shout outs to our guys, um, you know, try to throw out some motivational messages, some stuff about the swing, that overloading. Um, thanks for the plug. That was yeah. smooth, just kind of slipped that in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think the, the big takeaway, the big thing that I think everybody, if you learn, what I hope that if nobody learns anything from me, it's just be positive, enjoy the moment. Um, have fun. So I have two rules as a coach. Well, I'm more two that I usually I constantly um, say to the guys, and that's I kind of stole from Joe Madden. Sorry, Joe. Um, it's constantly hustle. No excuse not to hustle. Have fun. Mm -hmm. You do those two things. Those are two things you can control. Mm -hmm. You do those two things. That's that's really all you can ask for as a coach. Um, awesome. Effort and effort and enjoying enjoying the game. Because at the end of the day, it is that. It's exactly that. It's a game. So it should be fun. Boom. Great job. Thanks for coming on.